Hi, I'm Andrew from Creative Guitar Studio. It is Thursday, February 11th, 2010. I'm just going to get right into some of the questions that have been coming in off my uh, guitar blog website. I'm going to start here with a question from Steve from the UK. Uh, he says here, I've been playing for about two and a half years and I feel as though I was, uh, I'm at an acceptable level, but my knowledge of chords seems fairly limited. I know power chords, major chords, bar chords, but I simply don't know the other types like sevenths, uh, etc. I feel this way for two reasons. One, I don't understand what they are, and two, I never seem to come across music uh, that uses much more than these chords. So can you help me learn more chords and explain to me how I can use them? Uh, I also notice here in, my, uh, in the side here of my pane that you have another question. That you, oh, it's like a, this is like a two-parter. You just put it in two separate emails. So let's, let me just focus on this one to start off with. Um, when it comes to chords, uh, I usually find the thing that people will need to do in your situation here is you need to study both the triad harmonies and seventh chord harmonies and know how the chords fit together and how they align through all the various keys. So if you do not understand triads um, of uh, major, minor, augmented, and diminished, and you don't know how they fit in harmony, and you also don't understand major 7, minor 7, dominant 7th, and minor 7 flat 5, you need to look into the chord construction and the building harmony of how all those fit together and practice them on the neck. It also sounds too like you may need to expand on the styles of music that you're listening to. Uh, you're just simply not going to see very many seventh chord harmony ideas that are occurring outside of things like jazz and pop jazz, smooth jazz music, uh, that kind of realm. So hopefully that helps. So let's get to your next uh, other side of the question here, which has to do by the looks of things with lead playing. Um, it says here, can uh, you help me focus on my lead guitar playing? Uh, I have a decent array of technical ability, like bends, slides, vibrato, etc. And I can play along with solos easy enough, but I want to be able to play as an advanced lead player. Where do I start? Um, well, you probably need to go a little bit further on the development of your fretboard layout on your neck. So you need to do things like um, understand how all the notes fit together in a vertical and a horizontal fashion. You're going to need to understand how octaves interlink across the fretboard. Uh, study all of your um, major and minor scales. Get into uh, pentatonics quite heavily. Know at least five patterns along the whole entire fretboard for that. And understand your arpeggios out of all of those chord types that I had mentioned. So all triad arpeggios, major, minor, augmented, diminished, and all the seventh chord arpeggios that I had mentioned as well. Also, I'd probably suggest working on the technical side as well. So getting involved with non-musical things, exercise work, you know, fixed finger studies, uh, different kinds of position studies, um, and uh, you know, work with a metronome, try and build a lot of uh, good dexterity and coordination between left and right hand, and that should really advance your playing. Now, one other sidebar thing I'll, I'll say just for I'm flipping to the next email now, but just wanted to also mention a really good thing uh, as well is to spend a lot of time focusing on other people's guitar solos. If you like a solo, learn how to play it. As simple as that. Let's go to the next email. This comes to us from Louis from Los Angeles. Uh, he says here, I just wanted to ask you regarding t uh, the notes to avoid and also ending notes in improvising. I've memorized all my scale shapes and positions on the fretboard, but so far I haven't been able to be successful in ending phrases or licks on good notes. I just want to know what would be a good ending note or improvising line uh, to end notes on, uh, or ending notes for uh, besides the chord tones. Well, um, that's all basically uh, interpretive stuff. You know, you've, if you want to look at it in the easiest sense, just look at the guitar players that you really enjoy listening to and learn their lines, know how they end lines, and also get uh, really aware yourself of what seems to be your favorite ways that you hear musically that things end and you know phrases wrap up, and, and really study your lines that you learn uh, in, in much more of a respective interval, so you understand like you know how things are maybe moving by way of a perfect fourth, or a perfect fifth, or you know by way of a major sixth, or a minor third, or something, you know, like, know how those notes are moving around and start spotting some of your favorite ways that lines uh, interact and uh, you know notes will you know crisscross in the intervals across of a scale and um, I also don't know how much work you've really done on your scales and your pentatonics and your uh, arpeggios but uh, like I mentioned on the last uh, email uh, that I was going over is uh, arpeggios are really crucial and I, I honestly don't see enough students spending you know in the early days enough time on them you've got to spend a lot of time on arpeggios and really know those shapes quite well and uh, you'll slowly you know be able to end phrases with really interesting uh, passages um, I, I guess it all comes down to though when I think about this seriously uh, what you like and what your tastes are at and I think that still could come back to your favorite guitar players so um, 
I'd highly suggest learning other people's lines. Uh, I, I, this month I started a series on the members area of my uh, creativeguitarstudio.com website where it's basically called Quick Licks. I've done one video on that so far. I'm going to start trying to create um, videos uh, in the Quick Licks series every month. And uh, as that site grows and there's more and more information on it, I think those Quick Licks uh, ideas will be quite popular because I, you know, the first one I put up, I received quite a few emails in saying, this is great, you know, just keep doing these, please. Uh, Next question it comes to us. I'm just going to move along here. Next question comes to us from Kurt out in Coventry. He says here, Recently, I am trying to play while singing. Uh, I like John Mayer. His tune's in your atmosphere. Uh, the rhythm is killing me on this. Uh, you need to sing on a regular rhythm, however your hands are playing. And you a rapid pattern, and you wrote the pattern out, but I uh, really got to stop this train rhythm in a month of practice and similar songs, including Heart of My Life and Who Says. They become very easy because they're the same rhythm. However, this time I cannot accomplish it all by breaking it down in small bleeds, beats. Uh, similar problems happen in extremes more than words in John's neon tune. Uh, can you please make a video about complex rhythms, uh, especially how to sing while playing? Uh, well, singing while playing and complex rhythms are two completely different things, really. Singing while playing has to do with one part of you being very unconscious to what's going on with that groove and the strumming end of things. So that playing aspect has to be very unconscious, and all your conscious mind has to be on your singing and how you're doing with your vocals. So uh, that's sort of like that conscious and unconscious kind of work that has to be there. So it's a lot of practice. Uh, you know, it's tough to do in the beginning, but you know, with time it comes. Uh, so that's kind of a separate thing altogether. But getting into the sound rhythms. You know, most people have trouble with rhythms because they don't understand uh, how to read and write rhythms. You have to learn how to read and write rhythms if you want to be good at them. And to know all the rhythmic durations as well. So know your quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes, how to understand syncopation. You know, even I've seen some pretty decent players have a lot of trouble with basic syncopation of eighth notes even. So, you know, you, this stuff needs to be well understood. And then once it's understood, you know, you will actually be able to, if you are stumped on a rhythm perhaps, you'll be able to just kind of listen to it, pick it apart, notate it, do a transcription of the rhythm, write it down, and practice that separately. Uh, I've done that oftentimes with complex rhythms that are really bothering me. I've actually just written them down on a piece of paper and studied them a little bit separately. It's surprising when you take something and put it on pencil to paper how quickly it comes together. You don't even really need to do that anymore, though, with programs like free programs like PowerTab or there's that Tux guitar. These things are kind of do all that stuff for you. So the resources are there better than they ever have been to get good at rhythm playing. But uh, if you do not know and understand all the various rhythms, you're not really going to be able to be that great at it. So um, you know that's sort of my suggestion to you there. I have to wrap it up, but uh, thanks for joining me again on one of these guitar blog videos. Uh, appreciate all the uh, messages that come into the studio. And uh, I'll uh, catch up with you all next week. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.